Hey, welcome to another episode of Interview with Albany Brew Crafter. Today we're talking with Don Coates, who's the Lieutenant Brewmaster General of the club. That's correct. And one of the original <laughs> six founding members. Yes. So let's let's start there. Like can you give us the origin of how Albany Brew Crafters came to be? Uh, I can. Um, there were a number of us that were members of another club and we found that there was a real need for a homebrew club in Albany. Right. Uh, a lot of us were driving from Albany up to Saratoga or out to other locations and it was it was just getting to be kind of a hassle and Albany being the capital, right. why didn't we have our own brew club? Right. So when the idea came up, uh, I will be perfectly honest and say that I was almost against it at first because I didn't want to see it fly in the face of the other club that I was a member of. Right, right. Uh, however, the need was definitely there. I couldn't deny it. And uh, once we all sat down and talked about the vision of the club, what we wanted to do, where we wanted to go, I saw that the two clubs could coexist and I could be a member of both without any conflicting interest. And that sold me on it. So, cool. Um, I should have I should have opened with this is like the the vitals. <laughs> sure. Where are you from? How old are you? And what do you do for a living? Uh, I am from Warwick, New York, in downstate New York, Orange County, on the border with Jersey. Uh, I came up to Albany to go to college in 1993. I hate to say, <laughs> uh, and Albany kind of got its hooks in me, and I just never left. So I've been calling the Albany area my home ever since. Right. Uh, what were the other questions? How old are you and what do you do for a living? Uh, so I am in my late 30s and uh, I have recently transferred from IT into AV for uh, the new SUNY College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering. Right. Um, we're drinking actually my homebrew. Dom came straight from work. It's good. Um, I know it's good. You don't gotta tell me. <laughs> um, but um, anyways, speaking of home brewing, let's get into that. Um, did you get into home brewing first, or did you get into craft beer first? What was your awakening? I would say that I got into craft beer first, um, and to to be honest, I wasn't much of a beer drinker. Uh, in college, uh, other than you know the normal right. college swill, but that just wasn't enjoyable to me. And I couldn't understand why people drank beer. And then uh, <laughs> I was at a party with a friend, and he cracked open something I had never seen before. It was Sam Smith's Oatmeal Stout. Right. And it was this dark black motor oil looking <laughs> viscous liquid that he dumped into a glass. And I was immediately intrigued, uh, and I took a whiff of that. That doesn't smell like beer. That smells like something good. I don't know. And and that was it. I was hooked. <laughs> so how did you get into home brewing? So I got into home brewing um, one Christmas. One of my friends got me a learn to brew kit, and uh, simultaneously one of my family members got me one of those Mr. Beer kits. Right. Uh, so apparently I was giving off the alcohol vibe at that Christmas. Um, so I, I started with the Mr. Beer kit because that other kit just looked too daunting. I had no idea what to do with it. Uh, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. The Mr. Beer kit looked like something easy. Pour a can in here, cook it, yeah. dump it in this barrel. Uh, and that was it. That was my first experience with homebrew. What year was that? Uh, that was probably 1999. Okay. So, yeah, so you're going on like about 14, 14 years. years now. Cool. Um, <clears throat> do you brew all grain or extract? Uh, I am an all grain brewer now. Right. What kind of equipment do you have? Uh, I've got a Coleman cooler, um, my, uh, my Bayou uh, propane burner. Just a very simple setup uh, to make things uh, as uncomplicated as possible. Right. So do you, do you brew inside or outside? Um, I mostly brew outside. I, I typically will brew in my garage. Mm -hmm. 
um, having any problems with wind. Right. Uh, but mostly outside. Cool. Um, now, do you come up with recipes yourself? Um, I do. Uh, mostly they're slight evolutions off of something else that I've either done before or off of a recipe that I've seen and maybe tried. Um, I almost never brew the same thing twice. Right. I would rather, I mean, I've never brewed that perfect beer. <laughs> so until I do that, I'm going to keep tweaking and I'm going to keep playing until I do. Now, do you, do you keg or bottle? Or both. 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 Yeah. Um, I keg mostly because I like to force carb and it's just so much easier than bottling. Yeah. Uh, but when I have things that I want to give away as gifts or anything that I can age, for example, the barrel project that we're working on. Right. We've, we've got this giant, you know, 50 five gallon barrel full of Russian Imperial Stout and my portion is uh, seven gallons or, or whatever it is, right. uh, I'm going to bottle that yeah. because I'm going to want that to age for a couple of years. Some of it I may crack open this Christmas, but uh, that stuff I'm going to probably mostly bottle. Yeah, let's let's backtrack a little. Can you talk about the barrel project? Because a lot of the viewers probably don't know. Like how did that, sure. like what was it and what did it entail? Uh, so the barrel project seven uh, members of the club got together and we each brewed 10 gallons of Russian Imperial Stout and that was uh, that was quite a feat to get us all together. Uh, it, it included a, a grain buy specifically for this beer. At the it, same place at the same time. Too. At the same place at the same time using uh, ingredients through this grain buy using the same water Right. It was uh, the same water profiles, same mash temperature. I mean, we needed to make this as similar as we can, but how do you brew 70 gallons of beer in a homebrew setup? Yeah. You know, especially when my five gallon batch was overflowing my Coleman cooler because of right. how much grain was in, in the mash. Right. Um, Where'd you so guys get the barrel from? We got the barrel uh, we found it on Craigslist, and it's from a downstate New York distillery called uh, Hill Rock Distillery. Um, Aaron, the, the brewmaster general, uh, went down with his pickup truck, checked it out, kicked the tires, thought it was a good barrel. Uh, it had been used to make a New York State bourbon uh, that had been aged in there, so we thought, hey, this is perfect. We're, we're a New York State club from Albany, New York, brewing beer from grains that we purchased in New York. I don't know if they were grow grown there. Uh, so let's put it in a New York State bourbon barrel and let it age. Cool. Now, so you everybody's gotten, like, how did you divvy it up? Like, you just brought, like, a, a bucket or, uh, or is it still in the barrel? It is still in the barrel. Uh, we're going to be pulling it out of the barrel uh, next week. Um, we didn't want to pull it out and then not have the next batch ready to go in, uh, but we were having some problems logistically with, with finding the next place to, to house the barrel you know, for a good appropriate place because it can't stay where it is now. Right. So how, like, how are you going to get your shirts? You're going to bring out a bucket? And... So we're each going to show up with our carboys or kegs right. or what have you and right. just fill it right from Just there. siphon it out. Yep. The... Okay, cool.